Alrighty, so we got a performance review on these bad boys right here. This is the Air Jordan 36. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So these guys right here, again, are the Air Jordan 36. This is the performance review, and I am happy to say that this one is, I would say, tested the way that I used to test stuff pre-shutdowns, lockdowns, and global closures and things like that, where I was actually able to test these on three different indoor courts plus outside. And the coolest part is that every indoor court was a different type of condition. So my first court that I played in them on was actually my local 24. And uh, I actually think it's very funny because the 24 hour fitness, uh, they've had a long break or whatever to be able to go in between and clean the actual courts and they chose not to. I'm not sure exactly if this whole pandemic or whatever happened overseas or if it happened inside of a local 24 because it's dirty in there, man. It's crazy. Why is it so dirty? There's nobody in there. Go in there with a vacuum. All clear. Situation is 9 or 9 or 0. Ready for decon. Anyways, that court was filthy. The traction worked amazingly though, so I had no slipping. It was exactly what I had expected. This herringbone, fuck awesome. The second court that I took them on was a pretty well used court, but it is nicely maintained. Sometimes though, I do get slipping on certain shoes. This is not one of them. I was able to go in there, take them for a spin. It was great. I had no complaints whatsoever. It was better than in the 24, by the way. The 24 was the worst of the bunch. The second court was, you know, I think is a nice average court. The third court that I went on was really crazy. That one and first off, it was an NBA size court. My lungs were not ready for that. And then this shoe was fantastic inside of it, man. Like there was no issues whatsoever. It was just great. <laughs> I did take them outside, like I was saying. That's what all of this, you know, B-roll footage that you're gonna see is from. The outsole definitely is not made for outdoors. It was made for inside. There's uh, quite a bit of like fraying already, which is something that I always expect. I will say that the herringbone on this is thicker than in the 35, for sure. The 35 is very tiny and it's also a little bit thicker than the 34. I would say though, that overall performance is pretty much the same where you get multi-directional coverage and it works great. So I have no complaints with the traction. I think the Jordan brand has done a great job with this guy as well as the previous two models. What came before the 34? It was the 33. Three. Three. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm trying to think of what they looked like. I remember now. Mm. And yeah, and that one had like pretty good traction too. So I think they've done a pretty good job of traction over the last, you know, handful of years. I was trying to remember what they look like, okay? <laughs> Now the cushion on these guys is one of the features that I love and I don't, wouldn't say loathe, but I, I just feel like is the step back compared to the last two models. So what we have here is a lightweight Phylon midsole. It feels very stiff when you first start in them, but it does get better with every wear. Uh, it almost feels plush by now, like after all of the different times that I've played in them, right now they feel the best. So they do break in, so give it some time if you put them on and you're like, eh, I don't know about this, they will break in. I guarantee it. Now the actual technology that's inside for cushion is a full length Zoom Air strobe unit, which feels just the way that you would expect. It feels amazing, like this should be in every shoe man like there's no reason why it shouldn't be in every shoe i know that i say that every time i talk about one of these strobles but i really do mean it like it just slap that in everything am i allowed to say that i will be editing okay okay just slap that thing in everything <laughs> there you go now where i feel like they kind of messed up or like overdid things is in the actual zoom unit that you can see protruding out of the outsole this reminds me of like the 33s you know 28s 29s 30s stuff like that and those those were great cushion systems I, i'm not going to try and like knock them or anything like that because at the time it was some really zoomy zoom but the 34s and the 35s those two shoes 
Cruise actually made it so that the zoomy zoom was enhanced tenfold. And on top of that, you had lots of stability because there was nothing sticking out of the outsole. So you had no weird wobbly feeling. You had nothing feeling like it was pushing your foot up just a titch in the forefoot. It was kind of the best of everything. Like it was stability and cushion all together. And it was amazing. This thing right here, you get used to it. It's not as protruding, I guess you could say, as some of the older stuff like the 33s. It's not like that, but it's still different than what I got used to with the last, the last two models were amazing. I'm just gonna say that. The cushion on the last two models was amazing. This one, they didn't really need to do this. They could have either removed this completely and you would have been fine with just the full length zoom strobel, or they could have still implemented that, but had it be smooth, much like they did in the KD-13s. And I mean, that shoe was hella comfortable, so they didn't need to do this, I don't think. I think that this was like an over-design element. Oh, also, the 35s destroyed my arch, okay? This did not. No issues with the arch plate for me personally. In my mind, that's a huge plus. They did chew up my pinky toe. Yeah. I don't know where it happened. Well, obviously where my pinky toe is, but like when I put my hand in the shoe, it's smooth as a baby's bottom. So I don't know what caused it, but something did. And it only happened the one time. So in my head, I'm gonna call that a non-issue, but I am curious to know if it happens to other people. Now the materials right here remind me a lot of the 34s where it's damn near see-through. It's really lightweight, very well ventilated, especially if you do play outside. Like this is one of them shoes, like we're in Sacramento. It's hot as shit outside and uh this helped so that was great it's very strong by the way so despite it being in see-through like this weird dude like I, I don't know how they get like dental floss is what it looks like i don't know how they got dental floss to be so strong but they did do i think that this will rip on some people i do think it might i'm just saying it didn't happen to me now the fit is true to size that's what i recommended in the first place on our first impression that's what i still recommend now they do still remain very narrow and very tight so if you don't like that fit for one this might not be the shoe for you you might want to try these bricks on i don't know but anyways uh the fit might not be great for everyone uh this is a very very specific fitting shoe. It's very narrow, very tight. It's something that I personally do like. So that was a highlight for me, but uh, for someone else, it might not be the thing. Lockdown though is actually surprisingly good, especially because like I was saying, this materials see-through, man. I can't believe that this stuff held as well as it did. You also sit within the midsole a little bit, so that does help alleviate some pressure from like the see-through parts. The more traditional looking area of the shoe, the collar and everything works perfectly. I was a little bit worried about the grommets because they're metal inside. Sometimes those can scratch up your ankles. You, you got to make sure that you tuck it in there. Lacing these up is kind of a pain in the ass because of this stupid thing. I get why it's there. It's to pay tribute to the Jordan 6, yada, yada, yada. It's great, but it also doesn't flap down like the original one does, so you can't see the laces in there. It's a little bit confusing using sometimes when you're, you're like pulling the wrong ones. But anyways, just make sure that the tongue is tucked in there and you won't get any chafing from the grommet. The overall lockdown though, like I was saying, is really good. Like I was pretty surprised. These are hella light. Like I, I still can't believe how light they are because of the 34. The 34 is pretty damn light, but this is like taking that light thing up a notch and it didn't sacrifice any performance, which I think is a good thing. So there's a huge plus in that department. The overall support I think is good from basically the midsole up. The only problem I think that they have is that little guy right there. That that's where you get the wobble. Someone was saying that they could see it teeter or whatever. So that's what it's like on court. You feel that a little bit, get used to it. Heavier guys will probably push that down quite a bit more than someone like myself, but uh, it's just something to keep in mind where if you like a more flat, wide, stable base, that little guy right there is gonna like up your mojo a little bit. So with all of that being said, uh, we're actually gonna take things over to the Wear Testers Discord community. We actually asked them if they had any additional questions, maybe something they wanted me to elaborate on. So we're gonna go ahead and grab some questions. So what do we got? Jacob Manahan 98 would like to know, would you like to see the Eclipse plate utilized in future Jordan releases or do you think it's a gimmick? The Eclipse plate? Yeah, we've had now what three renditions of it? Uh, yes, I think this one has been the best one. Uh, I did go over some of the court footage and I was trying to see what this was doing. It looked like some of it was compressing which was interesting but you don't feel that on the court. This was one of those shoes when it first leaked you couldn't see the zoom in the forefoot like you could on the 34 and 35. I was worried that there was no air in the shoe. They did the zoom strobel thing and all that stuff so this feels a little smoother. Uh, I do like this one maybe the best, but like I was saying, the 34s to me is still, I still think that's like the greatest Jordan since the 28 and the 29 performance wise. Which brings us to Duke Starfighter. If you could 
separate the last three Jordan signature models, seeing as how they all share the implementation of that Eclipse plate and have shared tech, what would your order be and why? Any of the 34s first. I love playing in the regular ones. I love playing in the low top ones and I really love playing in the SE ones, the one with the zipper because of all that leather. Man, those were like a Ferrari. Like those were killer, dude. Now I would put this one second because the 35s my foot up so bad uh, I had to go and like buy a second pair and have a friend of mine alter them like by putting like actual eyelets and removing the nylon cables and all that just to make them semi wearable and I could still feel the arch pushing into where my arch was I don't know if it's like a mental thing like where like my foot knows like no I don't like these but uh yeah I wouldn't even honestly I don't recommend 35 or uh, is it 35 yeah 35 sorry do you want to go over numbers again no <laughs> boom roasted 005 does it mean like boom roasted yeah from the office oh there we go <laughs> what features or tech from the 36 would you like to carry over to the 37 the zoom strobel put that thing in everything do it this is the greatest gift to footwear since air so with all of that being said, that's the performance review on the Air Jordan 36. Again, uh, which I actually just answered, somebody asked that. I would pick the 34s still over all of these, including last year's. I'd pick these over last year's though. Let me be clear, I, don't, I do not like 35s. I think that they look cool, but that's about it. Uh, if you guys wanted any more information, you can head over to weartesters.com. There's gonna be a link down below in the description box. That's where you can see the written review as well as their performance scores and the weight and all that stuff. So have at it. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the support over the years. And uh, that's pretty much it. So until next time guys, see you on the next one.